looking at the Fox Valley when North played Oshkosh North at their tournament here. No, Oshkosh North, defending state champs, was just 500 in their league, finished about six in their league, and they came into this house and beat them. But, you know, that was way back in December, and Sheboygan North playing at home should be a nice thing. I mean, they, they've been battle-tested against a very good Southwest team, and, you know, over the summer and things. So I like the fact they're playing at home. Uh, one of the things about tonight's game is both teams come in with uh, some players chipped up. I know Will Robinson is not suited up tonight for North. And uh, one of the higher scorers for uh, Oconomowoc, Nate Platter, averaging 9.6 points a game is out. He's got a boot on his foot. He, uh, unless they make it to state, he may not play anymore this year. Yeah, that's a big, big factor is having that guy on the floor is having that, missing that guy. When you have one of your leading scores on a team, that's big. You know, if there's one thing Sheboygan North seems to have is depth. We talked about it all year with the players. We talked about it in the booth. You know, you know, you had Tanner Sawyer starts, but Jack Ward, he comes in and plays a lot of minutes. Matt Schmitzky's coming off the bench. Last year he was a starter. I mean, Austin Ty's another one that comes in and contributes a lot of minutes off the bench. I mean, Sheboygan North is really deep. I don't know much about the Coonies. I really don't. I know they got to start a freshman. You know, when you got a guy coming off their sixth man, now all of a sudden got to start, I think it's going to hurt them a little bit more than his North. Oh, yeah. And one of the things that hurt North, especially in that second Green Bay Southwest game, they had trouble matching up, and I think it hurt them towards the end of the game. You know, it's kind of like Wisconsin with their big offensive line. You don't see the result of that bigness until the fourth quarter. Yeah, I think what you're going to have to do is, like North does, they're going to have to press and play with their guard play. And hopefully, you know, you get guys like Brent Witter, who is, you know, averages almost six, seven rebounds. You know, your guards are going to have to rebound. You know, everybody's going to have to hit the boards and, you know, that, that's going to hurt them their size, there's no doubt about it. But I think the pressure by the guards, and I mean, North, I mean, really picks up right about half court and puts a lot of pressure. And, you know, everybody talks about, oh, they got big guys. Well, you know, it's like anything else. Well, yeah, but if you defend those guards tough, they can't feed the post either. So, I mean, I think I think North's defense will help there. Well, that'll come down, like you said, to Oconomowoc being able to handle the pressure. So their guard play is going to become uh, very important. Uh, their leading scorer is Caleb Flatten Moore. He's averaging 13 a game, and Drew Fisher averages 10 and a half. Uh, those guys, you know, it's always nice when you're the leading scorer to have another guy up there. But the third guy, that Platten guy, he's Platter guy, he's out. Uh, that uh, could be a difference. Yeah, and a 6'2 shooter too. I mean, I mean that's that's what really hurts him. I mean, he's a big kid, and we'll see what they have to do for uh, for that situation. Now North of course is not. He's averaging 23 a game. Following him is Sawyer Pottis with a little over 15 a game. But he had a huge game a couple games back. He had, I think, over 30 points. Yeah, Sawyer started the season off like a bang and then was kind of like seven, eight points a game. And then the last third of the season, like Marty said, he's been on fire. And uh, he's been averaging up there 20 points in the last games and really been that extra punch because you, you know you never always count on people to do well but Sawyer's doing well. I think Max Schmidt needs to have a big game tonight too. I think Sheboygan North's gonna hit a bunch of threes tonight and I think they're gonna win this one carried away. I just I got a good feeling. You know what I think Chris? I think the horn section is awesome for the pep band of North. We're gonna step off when we come back we'll have the starting lineups and the tip off for tonight's game. And let's hear it for the pep band. <laughs> Thank you. Today I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be.
Ladies and gentlemen, Oconomowoc High School and Sheboygan North High School and the WIAA require good sportsmanship at education-based sporting events. Attendance at interscholastic activities is a privilege with the expectation to exhibit positive and respectful behavior. For the enjoyment and respect of all in attendance, your cooperation in demonstrating the high ideals of sportsmanship is expected and greatly appreciated. Ladies and gentlemen, to honor America and those defending our freedom, we ask those who were able to stand, remove your headwear, place your hand over your heart for the playing of our national anthem. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this evening's regional contest between the Oconomac Raccoons, coached by Jay Benish, and the Sheboygan North Eye Running Raiders, coached by Eric Wirth. Here's the introduction of your starting lineups. First, for the Raccoons from Oconomowoc. Number two, a freshman, Greg Galloway. A senior, number four, Connor Enright. A senior, number five, Jake Perrain. A junior, number 12, Caleb Flayton Moore. A junior, number 14, Drew Fisher. And now the starting lineup for the Sheboygan North Eye Golden Raiders. A senior, number five, Austin Tice. A senior, number 15, Max Schmidtke. A senior, number 24, Brent Witter. A senior, number 31, Sawyer Pottest. A junior, number 41, Turner Kraus. Your officials for this evening, John DePsquale, David Thiel, and Kirby Frank. These individuals are assigned by the WIAA. Their expertise and integrity qualify them to administer the rules of the game. Providing athletic training coverage for tonight's game, Sarah Blindauer of Aurora Sports Health. Call Aurora Sports Health to learn how you can take your training to another level. Visit them at aurora.org slash sports. There you get a good shot of uh, Eric Wirth. Getting ready to tip this ball game off. Raccoons have the first possession. North, of course, in a man-to-man -man defense. Turner Krause with the start. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. Okay. Tice on the fall, and that's that height disparity, Chris, we were talking about. 
I don't know if you noticed in warm-ups, Chris, when we were standing down there waiting to go on the air, but they made a lot of three-point baskets. Oh, I and a lot of them from the left side of the uh, three-point line. Yeah, they're big and strong, Marty. They are uh, just, you mentioned in the opening now, we noticed they were big, but now without their uh, tank top top, they are put together. Uh, been kind of the thing we said in Sheboygan, we're trying to change the way we do things, working out and things like this. This is what you want to look like if you're a high school player, big and strong like this. Platter was a 6-2 guy. Winner for two. And here's Platter's that. out uh, taking his spot as a 6-2 freshman, Greg Galloway. And look at the pressure by North. Look at the pressure. Schmidtke on a leaping leaner couldn't get it to go. Witter saw a possible opportunity to come up and try and make the steal, but I think it was a correct decision to hand, hang back. Galloway, the freshman, is number two. I'm sure, you yeah, know, Conomowoc's going to be, that's all caused by, I was going to say, the pressure. They, they haven't seen defense like this. Sheboygan North is in your shorts, and they are right there. The leading scorer for Oconomowoc is number 12. Caleb Flattenmore. He was the one that just committed the turnover. Deep three is no good by Kraus. Oh. And right, making that three. Witter with a quick three, he's got it. Galloway, the freshman, gets the task of taking on Brent Witter and he just got schooled there. Freshman versus a senior in Witter. That's a walk. Yeah, that was good defense, good hustle on the D by uh, Austin Tice. It's already third turnover on the Coonies. Renzelman in for uh, Tice. He was at the table getting ready to check in before that uh, nice defensive effort. Good feed inside. And then drawing the foul was uh, Jake Perrain. And that was not a good move by him. He's six foot six. Stay down on your feet. Why do you have to leave your feet there? As being a senior, you would think you would know a little better than that. Now you just pick up a silly foul. Oh, dancing on the rim and it drops through for Potest. Tanner Jankwar checks in for the Raiders and uh, you mentioned it in the opening, Chris, that a lot of guys play for North and uh, obviously that's important if you're going to put on a lot of pressure. Got to have fresh guys in there. Look at the trouble. And a tap away and a steal. Kick it out for a three. Oh, bad miss. Oh, Renzelman missed. Uh, Witter was open in the corner. Oh. In and out. Good job by Renzelman to tap it out. North looks sharp. Hustling, not flat-footed, playing good deed. They're ready to play tonight. Good fake. Witter had his shot blocked. Jankwart getting up tight on uh, the Oconomowoc player. There's a travel not called. You can't give that. Boy, he dragged the pivot foot big time, Chris. And I think the outside official was going to call yeah, that travel, I noticed and that then too. he changed his mind. Should have should have over overdone that. Said that the uh, travel was before the foul. 
Oh, that was flat, but rolled in. Perrain with the three-point lead. Gives Oconnem a walk, an 8-7 lead now. Witter, catch and shoot. Got bumped, no call. I'll tell you, some of these Oconomowoc players look tired already. Only a couple trips up the floor. See if that... Schmidtke just a little bit late, coming over on the double team. Allows Flatten Moore to score his first basket of the night. North I, down three. Yeah, and I noticed some of these Coonies already flat-footed and tired. I think you're gonna get them over to the hall. There's a wow, we major bumping and banging going on, and Perrain gets called for his second foul. And that's big. Like I said, there's six six going onto the bench with 13:47 left. Furman, uh, Joe Furman, checking in. Jankwart, oh. Great move by Jankwart, but he couldn't get the shot to go. And Oconomowoc comes away. Lestina comes in and scores right off the bench. Witter's been right there. The basket just doesn't want it, Marty. Got to keep shooting. Who scored that last basket for Oconomowoc? Uh, number three, Ray Lestina. Right down the lane goes Renzelman and he scores. Oh, where's our press? Got to get up on that press. I think that's going to hassle them, wear them down. Uh-oh. Oh, they lost track of them. Fisher scoring. I got picked. Furman had it on top. He walked. Call that one, but you missed the obviously. The yeah, obvious one on the right. other end, which was a three-point play. Big time drag of the foot on that one by the Oconomowoc kid not called. <laughs> yep. Got him that time. Plastina drug, drug the foot. Tyson for a potist. The raccoons extending the pressure now, Chris. Ooh, a lot of bumping and banging. Oh, yeah. Furman and uh, Witter trying to get through at the same time. Yep. Got to make a decision on that. Good solid screens there by Tice. Renzelman rises up above the crowd and scores. Very aggressive for Chase. Good job. Good job by Renzi to drive it to the hoop. Witter almost with the strip, but getting it back and scoring was Lestina, and he's fouled. Almost. Yep. That's an almost. Pottist and Schmidtke back in. Here comes a big fella, too, off the bench, Marty. Yeah, big number 32, Mike Kundi. Kundi, 6'5". Oh. Comes Which in. Which way? For, yeah. <laughs> Short. 
Jankport with the rebound. Pottis or Schmidtke here, yeah. please, or Jankwart. Renzelman trying to get the rebound, but couldn't. There's enough offensive threats, but you can't leave guys open for them. Scoring the basket was Greg Galloway, the freshman. Nobody accounted for him, and there it is right there, a three-point hoop. North down 19 to eight. It's a full timeout, Scott. Chris, uh, other than the obvious, you know, not covering that three-point shooter, what's wrong with North? Well, they're just, the shots aren't going in, and Cooney's uh, needs to be pressed, and you can't be pressed if you don't make baskets, and uh, there's just been a couple uh, lapses there. I mean, they've got to get through some big screens, and this is where communication helps, and being a bunch of seniors, North is okay. It's just a little run. It's only an eight-point game, and there's... My gosh, there's 38 or 28 minutes left. There's a long way to go on this one. 10.37 left this half. Now uh, Oconomowoc in a zone. Pottis had an open shot from the corner, couldn't get it to go. Yeah, unfortunately it, uh, oh, a step back three is no good by uh, Enright. I think there's another bad play. These guys keep. Yeah, they're saying he wasn't in the act of shooting. And they keep le me uh, leaving their feet, which is dumb. They're big and tall, just stand there and be tall. Conwalk, I think, played zone on the last series. Back to a man-to-man -man here, wide open. Shooting and scoring was Austin Tice off a nice pass from uh, Renzelman. And that just should never happen. I mean, uh, there again, the defender on the out of bounds should be standing under the basket, especially at the varsity level. Nice chance for North to get a three-point play. Thank you yeah, very much, This is Cooney. exactly what they needed. Tice is Free throw rolls off, was a little bit flat, didn't have much arch on that shot. Fisher looking for an opening, couldn't find it. Gets it over to uh, Enright. Good hustling defense by uh, Witter. Connor Enright picks up the foul. Ooh. Must have been a screening foul of sorts. And he's got two now. Greg Galloway is back in for the Raccoons. Some major players with fouls trouble for Oconomowoc already. Be nice to get Schmidtke going a little bit. Yeah. Conomowoc pretty quick on defense, Chris. And Sam, for as big as they are. Sam Roth is just all over Witter. I mean, he is Renzelman just... driving to the hoop, couldn't get it. Found the opening, but couldn't score. Got to reload and do it on this end, boys.
Oh, he walked. Which Worth said this, thought the same thing as me. Nice. Fisher He's got around the defense. Pot is not moving his feet well enough. Yeah, and he used his body well, Marty. I noticed that uh, when he was working against the pressure, bringing it up across half court, he uses his body well to get the defense behind him. Yep, and protect the basketball. Real nice job of work there by Fisher. Back to an eight point lead for Oconomowoc. Renzelman turning down the three point shot. Schmidtke on a catch and shoot, got it. His first three, first points of the night. Just two threes for North, under eight minutes. We'd like to see them get about eight or nine tonight. Fisher was their second high scorer, Chris, at ten and a half. Ten, five and, uh, seconds. That's who uh, Witter was guarding that last trip down. Turner Krause coming in for Renzelman. And there you had. Chase had a good run, Chris. Very He's good. out there. And again, Cooney's have to go with somebody off the bench and he doesn't get rid of the ball in a five second call and a turnover. Chance for uh, North to slice that lead again to two or three. Witter being guarded closely. Having trouble getting open. A bump big time on the drive. Are they gonna give him? Yes, they're gonna give him two shots. Sam Murat picks up the foul. They have one, two, three, four, five different players with fouls, Chris, but only one of them has two. Oh, I thought and that's two of them a Perrin. Yeah, oh. no. I thought Perrine and uh, who else did I think had two fouls? Enright, I thought, had two fouls, too. You know, I did, too. When I marked it down, I didn't have any for him. Who we were rounded down for Witter on that first free throw. 7.23 left in the first half. North down four. And they're creeping back, creeping back. Oh, here we got a new defense. Haven't seen this all year. 2-1-2, two, two, zone press. Yeah, can't let them get it down that deep. They're gonna score every time. Platt Moore has six points. No call on Witter's drive to the hoop. Boy, oh boy, it looked like an obvious foul. Galloway loads it up. Oh. And got it. Went about three feet above the whim and then it just dropped right through. Tough break for the Northsiders. Look at the size of that kid and he's a freshman, number two. Good use of the body, no call. North comes away with a steal and now we do finally get a whistle. I'll tell you who got away with the major bump was Drew Fisher, number 14. Bonus time now Bonus for, North, time for North, and that's yeah. good. That's North, an excellent free throw shooting team. Something that Coach Desatel did a great job of doing. It teams would always seem to get the other team into foul trouble and get to that bonus line early where they'd chip away and get points. Well, they had it down to three points, Chris, and all of a sudden it's back up to eight. They're all right, I'm not worried. Watch this stroke, Chris. Is that sweet or what? Yepper. Norris six for seven at the line this half. Oconomowoc is uh, two, three for four. They're also, Oconomowoc shooting 66% from the floor. A lot of those are because they're getting layups and shots close Galloway to the paint. Galloway traveled. Up, oh, no, coach called a timeout. A timeout by Oconomowoc. It's a 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it here. 6-11 left in the first half. 
Oh, Chris, I'm worried. Are you? Simply because of the height. Oh, well. You know, like I was saying in the opening, you know, sometimes that height doesn't show itself till later in the game. Well, I'm con the thing that's uh, I'm okay is is North's not hitting any of their threes, and they, I mean they haven't. But I'll say Oconomowoc's making it difficult for North, yeah. and uh, very yeah. difficult to get open. But the one thing the North is doing, they're getting to the basket. Rensman's driven to the basket. <laughs> Witter's getting to the basket, which means they're getting fouled. So that since the three-point shot isn't there, they're doing the smart thing, and because. Oconomowoc's right on top of them. They're driving to the basket and they're getting those fouls. That's why they have a 7-3 advantage at the, at the fouls situation. Witters on uh, Flatt and Moore, number 12 underneath the basket. That's interesting. That is an interesting. Oh, they're gonna get a charge. I'll tell you, if that was a college game, Chris, I think it'd be a foul on uh, Witter because he was inside the that little hoop. Galloway instead picks up the foul. That's his first. We'll have to check out that Enright foul situation. Oh, Jankort almost lost it. Tice going hard to the hoop. Defense stepped in front, no call either way. You know, I think that why they didn't call it is because of the foul discrepancy. <laughs> I honestly do. That should have been a foul on Oconomowoc. Oh, it's eight to three, the, uh, you know, the coach is in the ear. That should have been a foul. A good penetrating pitch. Fisher's shot is over the ramp, over the backboard, out of bounds. Pottest and Renzelman coming in for North. A Lot of substitutions, Chris, for North. Yeah. You know, yeah, I keep talking about the height of Oconomowoc. Maybe it's a substitution pattern early in the game will pay dividends for North later on. I think so. Schmidtke couldn't get the oh, bounce. Push. Moore with his fifth rebound. Yeah, Fisher driving the basket, couldn't get it oh to go, and my. then over the back is the big guy, Flatten Moore. Nice. And the Oconomowoc's fans having nothing to do with it. Only his first though, Chris. Maybe who's ever yelling like this, we should uh, send him the Mike McCarthy uh, tape. You look, you sound like an idiot yelling at the officials. Making Hottest, their, three for three so far, keep yep. it going. Making all their hay at the free throw line. The foul is really, really gonna hurt, hurt uh, Oconomowoc. Oh, that's a break, oh, a lot of bumping there. A good job of getting it in the middle of the floor, and Galloway looks, uh, does not look like a freshman out there, Chris. No. Oop, two guys in the same <laughs> spot. <laughs> Reminds me of the Green Bay Packer passing game. Yeah, Renzelman picks up the foul, but I'll tell you, doing a great job of getting him out of the way was Flatt and Moore. Renzelman's first foul, only the fourth team foul on North with 437 left. Galloway gets fouled. Renzelman again. The Connemawak plays in the Classic Eight. It's down near Milwaukee. Wow, those are big, big football schools. Catholic Memorial, McGuanago, Arrowhead. All the Waukesha schools. That's a big, big, strong conference. Normally for football. I was going to say not big in terms of number of schools, but uh, the size of the schools. You know what's weird is there's the classic eight, but they have nine teams. 
<laughs> Say that again? They're the classic eight, but they have nine teams in their league. <laughs> Sounds a little like the Big Ten. Yep. North shooting just 33% from the floor, Marty, but they're only down six. Better Winner now. finally had a wide open shot and he buried it. The free throws have kept North in and now maybe they'll make some shots. The world's okay. Good help. Good help deep. defense. But getting the wide open look. In right. And he does only have one foul. Yes, he Chris. does. Enright, that was a flat-footed shot. Sam Rott has uh, Brent Witter. Witter trying to post up inside, but I'll tell you, they're fighting him tooth and nail down there. They're not giving an inch. Catch and shoot, no good. Witter with the rebound, fake. Puts it up, no good. And coming away with the rebound was the 6-5, Flatten Moore, but North steals it. Tice couldn't get it to go, but he's fouled, and Flatten Moore picks up another foul. Why don't you yell, you know, they're yelling at the officials, but they should do is yell at their team for all the turnovers. Austin Tice will be at the line shooting a pair. He's got the only missed free throw for North this half. Free throws are keeping them in the game. And Mike Kundi comes in along with uh, Ray Lestina. And now uh, Moore on the bench, leading score. Big force in the rebound with two fouls with three minutes left. Nine turnovers on the Coonies already, nine. And here they're coming again at you. Four North, point lead is. for the Raccoons. I'll tell you, <laughs> Potest is not going to take the ball away from Kundi. There just is no way. <laughs> but he's going to scrap. He's, that's right, exactly. He's in there scrapping. And that's another turnover by the Coonies. Make it 10. Good feed inside to Witter and he scores. What a pass. Sawyer Pottest. Just under three minutes left in this first half. Very entertaining. They're calling an offensive foul. In uh, Chris, I'll say this, in defense of Oconomowoc, there's only one guy down there making all the yep. noise. It's not like there's a bevy of fans from Oconomowoc. The one reason I don't like that foul is that their player was getting bumped up the floor, bumped yeah, up the I floor, agree. and then he pushes and then he gets the foul. Yeah. Jankport couldn't get it to goal. Coming away with it is Witter. Kick out Jankport again, couldn't get it. Witter on the save, but he bounced it on the out of bounds line and uh, couldn't quite get the save. Who else but Brent Witter in there in the trees getting that rebound. Drew Fisher limping to the sideline. It's a battle out there, Marty. Yeah, it's a fight. Turner Krause checks in. And North is not going to back down on their press. Love it. Max Nineman in the game for the first time that I've noticed anyway. Number Cut. 11, he's got the ball right now being guarded closely by He can't by handle Krause. the rock. See? Oh, oh, boy. Kundi gets a gift by mistake, but he pays. But he scores. Took advantage of it. Oconomowoc's been lucky on a couple of their uh, baskets. Now look at this mismatch. Witter's going to have an opportunity. Get Witter the ball. Galloway grabbing at Witter. Witter under pressure, rims out. Galloway comes away with the rebound. Can't believe he's a freshman. Wow. 
you mentioned, he's averaging just over five points a game, which uh, for a freshman, I think is pretty good. I think the Coonies would just like to get to halftime with their foul situation with the lead. Oh, Galloway worked inside, got the rebound, but he couldn't finish. Up to Pottis, he pulls up for a three, oh. couldn't get it. Looked good from here, and a great effort out there by Connor Enright. Schmidtke for North. Sam Rott coming back in. Brooks Walter checking out for the Raiders. Krause almost had it. The quickness of North. Yeah, Brooks Walter. Uh, was in, was yeah. out. Wow. And we got a 30 second timeout, so we'll keep it here. 114 left. You might need that just to get the ball in bounds. Yeah. I don't well. understand the timeout here with a minute 14. You might need those later, but. Uh, now a couple things in the first half, and you mentioned one of them, the fact that North really isn't shooting very well Dude. so far. Uh, but then, <laughs> one example, they're getting some breaks, I would say, that fan down the way, of course, wouldn't say this, but Oconomowoc on that errant pass right to Kundi. <laughs> yeah. Well, made North pay. Earlier, too, there was a play on the baseline when they got one in the Moore. There was about three of them they've gotten in there. Deep pass, Kraus on the deep pass defense, couldn't get it, but uh, Galloway traveled on his way to the basket. <laughs> that time there was more than one Cooney up. Yeah, I think there are a couple of Coonies up here with us <laughs> yelling about that one. And another turnover. In well, all uh, sincerity, Chris, I almost think that was a bit of a Euro step. It probably could have gone. Schmidtke with a wide open three, couldn't get it in. 13 turnovers for the Coonies. And that's another one. Oh, yeah. I thought they dribbled that off his foot. Look at the pressure. 45 seconds left. Enright has it. Down for one shot. They have a four point lead. Driving and not being able to score was uh, Galloway, but he was fouled by Austin Tice, and that'll be Austin's second foul. Well, that was one of the deals that you just have to take the, the layup, Marty. Galloway has eight points so far in this half. North shooting just 29% from the floor, Marty. Ooh. Gonna get better in the second half. Tice goes out, Jankwart back in. Now Tanner Jankwart has had several open threes and he just can't buy a basket. Um, Max Schmidtke does have a basket, but I'll tell you, he had a couple others that were wide open. He couldn't get those to go. And you're right on on there. Jankwart 0 for 5, Schmidtke 1 for 5. Good call, Marty. North will now attempt to play for one. There's 20 seconds left. The clock on your screen is not correct. Clock rolling down, 10 seconds. Witter looking for the opening, sees it down the lane, shoots, rims out, it's been that kind of half. And that shot goes off. We're at halftime here at North High School with the Conomowoc, of Conomowoc up 33 to 29. fouls are pretty dumb but if you decide to drink and drive underage you could lose your license and your freedom underage drinking and driving 
the ultimate party foul. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. Teacher, let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore, and frustration a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy and giving up impossible. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought and unconventional methods common. 
I'm a teacher. I make. Hey guys, how are you today? Good. I'm here to talk about how with technology you can make amazing worlds. Come with me. My team and I bring the Halo world to life. Is that you? That is me. I wasn't a math genius and I knew nothing about coding. But you guys do. You guys have the power to change things. I want your job. I want you to have my job. When you have arthritis, it can be a painful reminder of all the things you can't do. Let's get a grip on arthritis. You can help by donating at arthritis.org. Some chores you dread. You do them. But that doesn't mean you're happy about it. Then there's registering with the Selective Service. If you're a young man turning 18, the law says you have to register. It'll keep you eligible for college loans, government jobs, and training, and it only takes two minutes, which makes it not only your most important chore, but the easiest. When you turn 18, register at sss.gov or the local... Mom and Dad used to argue about everything, especially about Dad's drinking. My family went from totally crazy to quiet, calm, and even peaceful when Mom started going to Al-Anon family groups. I wanted a better relationship with Dad, so I asked Mom if she would take me to her Al-Anon meetings or to Alateen. I'm sure glad I did. If someone's drinking troubling you, you might be surprised at what you can learn in an Al-Anon or Alateen family group from people just like you. Call 1-888-4-AL-ANON or go to al -Anon and we're back at North High School. Before we talk about this ball game, we found out during halftime that South over at Hamilton is down 16 at half. Chris, uh, not looking good for them. But uh, let's talk a little bit about here. I know you've got some interesting stats. I heard you talking to Matt Horzen about it. Uh, what do you got for us? Well, interesting, North only down by four points, 28% shooting, eight of 29, and they only made three of 14 threes. Oconomowoc had 18 shots only. They're at 66%. I mean, the thing is, you turned them over 12 times, so kind of a str strange number game. What yeah, exactly. Uh, North was outstanding from the free throw line, kept them in the game. They hit uh, 10 out of 11. Okay. They had three threes. Their leading scorer, Brent Witter, had uh, 12 points to lead all scores in the first half. Uh, Oconomowoc had four threes. They made five out of eight free throws, not too bad. Uh, they were doing real good until Galloway missed those uh, two near the end of the half. Uh, North has just got to keep doing what they're doing, and hopefully those shots will drop. Yeah, they're, uh, this is a war, I'm telling you. They are getting well defended and very physical. We mentioned that before. Uh, getting, being aggressive, I think, was 
attacking the rim was a, a big thing for North. Uh, for Oconomowoc, boy, oh boy, they turned it over 12 times, which we hoped that they would do. If they clean that up, ugh, then I don't know what could happen here. But uh, I like North's chances. They're only down four, and they didn't play a great first half. Very competitive first half. Our crew tonight is Scott Maloff, our director. Richard Bartson giving you that shot. He's camera one. Eric Wiesman is down on the floor with camera two. Uh, I'm Mike Martin doing play-by-play. -play. Chris Wright is our color man and stats guy, Chris Wright. It's a battle. It's it's one of the best games we've seen all year, Marty. Now you talk about the refereeing and tournament action is different than it is in a regular season, and we're seeing that here. Flatten Moore gets it down deep, and you're just not going to score him down there. Stop him from down there. Yeah, once he gets it there, and again, that's what we said in the open. you got to put pressure on the guard so that they haven't. You got the deflection, but you didn't get the, the steal, so they had the second opportunity, plus the basket. Uh, the tight, the pressure on uh, Sawyer Pottis got to him. He missed that uh, layup attempt. Uh, I, you, I thought he tried to draw a foul. That Just could have been two. Make the basket. Perrine looking for a receiver. Perrine did not play much in that first half. He picked up two early fouls and then sat. Yeah, real He's, early. Uh, starting the second half, however. Yeah, with like 15 minutes left, he had the fouls. Good point, Marty. Little feet inside. Flatten Moore on the turnaround, couldn't get it, and then a tip goes over to Oconomowoc. And driving and scoring was Perrine. Another bad bounce for the Raiders, and they're down eight again. Is that a third foul? It is. And that silly foul out there again, and the big fella, so instrumental to the Coonies, is going to have to take a seat. The 16-12 mark. That's a big... Big clog out of the middle. Certainly is. Both ends of the floor. Oh, tough. Watch this. Fake, and he's gonna move off the screen here, get an opening and hit this tough shot. Oh. Yep. Guess we're not going to see that. That was tough. Another offensive foul on them. <clears throat> that's Perrine. That's his third. Wow. Coach is going to let him go. Sat out most of the first half. They're going to keep him in there and then. Schmidtke not looking for the pass right away and couldn't adjust to it and lost it. Just a, ooh, what do I got? Third turnover of the night. Oh, slipping around the defense and scoring was Lestina. He has nine points. Witter couldn't get it to go. Kraus trying to get the rebound, couldn't get it. Perrin gets it. I think that's a good decision for the Coonies to keep one of their big horses in there. Perrin 6-6. And getting oh, around wow. the defense, but not able to score was uh, Sam Rott. Boy, he had a nice drive. Getting up slowly is... Uh, Tice, Kraus, leaning and scoring down the lane. You know, and if I was with Conwag, it would be happening. There's a lot of contact on this end, and then North gets one here. Here you're going to see it. Look at the contact here. Lots of contact. Nothing called there. And then on this <laughs> end, North gets another foul. And again, that's three fouls on Conwag. And I'm not saying it wasn't a foul on Conwag, but they didn't get anything on this end either. Oh, 
Well, North was uh, really tough at the line in the first half. Let's hope they can keep that up in the second half. Thanks, Marty. Krause was two for two in the first half. Uh, couldn't get that one to go, however. I take responsibility for that, Chris. <laughs> they were, and their free throw shooting kept them in, the, in that half. And like I said, that's what they want to do. Get to the, to the rim, get to the foul line. A very good disciplined free throw shooting team is the Raiders. Perrine, that should be a travel. It's a tough assignment for uh, Chase Renzelman. Well, he had nowhere to go. I don't, I mean. Yeah, he, actually, he was really forcing the action. Yep. And uh, that, that may have been a result of him playing so little in the first half. Wants to make something happen in the second half. <coughs> Pottis, nice feed off to Renzelman who scores. Pottis with another nice pass. Sam Rott has it on top. Just down three. I like it. Pottis working hard on the post defense. Perrine being guarded by Schmidtke on the, on the outside. Look at North, just in your grill. Rott has it on the wing. And the North fan student section of Appreciates the effort. And Pottis is going to pick up the foul. Good defensive stand by North, however. Roth is going to shoot a couple of free throws. This one, boys and girls. Both look pretty good on those two free throws. And uh, Rode is guarding Witter. That was a pretty good matchup in the first half. I thought Rode did uh, oh. quite well. Look at him right in his face. You can't see it from that shot. He was like that all the game. Oh. Jankort got caught up in the air, but he was able to get the shot to go. You would have shot it. <laughs> you wouldn't have passed there. You would have shot there too. Galloway around the defense, rimmed in and then out. Witter comes away with the board. Break for North. Pulls up from three point land, couldn't get it. Coming away with the rebound was Perrine. That was Lestina on the rebound. So Chris, do you think that uh, Perrine's got a little bit of a uh, malfunction on his uh, uniform with those shoes? Oh. Renzelman taking it hard to the hoop and then picking up the foul was uh, Connor Enright, and that'll be his second. Yes. Here's another turnover, North's defense. <laughs> 15 turnovers now on the Coonies. They don't win this game. This will be the reason why is the big T for turnover. It's a three-point ball game. There's over just under 12 minutes. Oh, nice back cut. Pottis, then he gets a nice pass from Renzelman. They're sharing the ball, Chris. Kraus working hard on Galloway, and then we get a full timeout by Oconomowoc. 11.31 left in the second half. North down, 41-40.
you don't fix them, sparks from dragging tow chains could cause a wildfire. And that could be scary. Ah, Smokey! Only you can prevent wildfires. There you see Jay Benish talking to his team, you know, Conomawak uh, Coonies, and uh, checking in is uh, Caleb Platten Moore, number 12. There you see him. Big kid, he's their leading scorer. So far tonight, though, he hasn't had a lot of points. He's only got eight. They've been able to hold him in check pretty well. Well, it's some foul trouble for him. That's been the issue. Seems like a pretty good decision by uh, Jay Benish to leave Perrine in there. He's played yep. uh, quite a few minutes now with three fouls. And now Oconomowoc has the two big guys in. Wow. Perrine 6'6", six, six, Enright, uh, pardon me, Flatten Moore 6'5". <laughs> and a double dribble on the Galloway, another turnover. Pressure, 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 pressure. Can you handle the pressure by North D? You're not doing a good job. Called it in the opening. Yeah, yeah, we right. Were. We did talk about that, didn't we? The importance of their guard play. And it's been good for North against the Coonies. Guarding Witter this time is uh, Max Nineman, and he's uh, very tight on him. North looking. Can't get it inside. Witter was open for a second. Now he's open on the screen, but again, couldn't get it to go. Kraus on the save, but he put saved it right to Galloway of Oconomowoc. Uh. Uh, good double team by uh, Witter. Moore got just farther and farther away from the basket. Oh, good defense by Oconomowoc. Perrine, hard to the basket, couldn't get it to go. Putting it up and in is Max Nineman. A tough exchange. Renzelman finally takes a three and doesn't even come close. Well, the Oconomowoc fans are uh, calling for the travel on North, and I'm just not seeing it, Chris. No. Not even close. What a battle. Very much so. A good tip away, but Galloway gathers it back and puts it in. What's he doing there? Right place, right time. Shocked that he was even standing there. Why was he in the post with his big guy there? Crazy. There's a reason why they give Renzi that three ball. He's not going to shoot it. That's Galloway. A, that's a good really one. tight on Poya Potest. He drives and scores. Oh, they're going to give it to him. It's like a continuation. The NBA. Wow. And again, <laughs> driving to the rim tonight, getting to the basket. Lots of opportunities at the free throw line to get points when, you're, when the baskets are hard to come by. And another three-point play. We've had a bunch of those. And now they're up on way press again. Nineman's had trouble with pressure. Let's see how he does here. Oh, good feed off by Nineman. Scoring is flattened more. That was too easy, Chris. Yeah. He gave it to the wrong guy. Flatten Moore had that basket. Yes, he did. They put it up on the uh, scoreboard correctly. 
Schmidtke had a little bit of an opening, didn't take it. Nice, Sawyer, nice. Sawyer using the body well scores. Nice. He has 11 points now. Good job by Galloway to break the press. Flatten Moore has it at the wing, takes that 12 footer and drains it. Uh, oh my. Had to give that one, Marty. Got to yeah, give that one. But I'll tell you, it creates more problems for the North defense. Pottest on a quick one. Couldn't get the bounce to go. Witter's going to get called for the foul. Still a long way to go in this ball game. Set up your press, boys. Set up your press. Roden Enright come in for uh, Oconomowoc. They're gonna have trouble here. They're gonna have trouble here. Neneman's in there. No Galloway in here. Told ya. Schmidtke on the steal. I told ya. I told you. Roth throws it out of bounds. You, you took out your point guard. And you got just a mess for the Coonies out there now. Nineman's got to bring it up. They're all confused on defense. Hit a three now, Tice boys. Tice has it. They set up the double screen for Pottis, but uh, they fought through, prevented oh. the shot. And Witter again with a nice look. Couldn't get it in. It looked in. Oconomowoc does not like the pressure. I wish it would have came up and pressured even on that missed uh, shot attempt. Looked like they had an opening. Ooh, a lot of contact. Flat Moore couldn't make it. He had a little chippy and he couldn't get it in. Oh, no. It was a flop without falling over. That's a costly one, Chris. It's Brent's third. Hey, Scott, can you show a replay of that one? It's a 30 second timeout. Maybe we can get the re replay of that last foul. It didn't look like the arm swung out, Chris. It no. almost was like the defender in, in trying to retreat tripped. Stumbled a little bit. Yeah. Brent's just got to play hard. We only got seven and a half left. He's a smart player. There He'll was one do. call in the first half, and now this one, where the official that made the call was actually behind the play, and he's seeing the back. He's not seeing where their arms are in front. And I thought uh, Oconomowoc got caught on the same deal in the first half down on this end, where the official was calling it from behind. Eighteen turnovers now in Oconomowoc, and like I said, North just so quick. This makes it so difficult to get, struggle to get the ball in here. He doesn't want the ball. Max Nineman has it against Witter. Witter's got to be smart. Yeah. Oh, that was dangerous. You got three fouls, Brent. Oh, nice feed inside to Flanton Moore. He couldn't get the shot in, but he does draw the foul. And that's big that he missed that because that was a bunny. It's two bunnies he missed. Of course, that one was a little different. He's real, you know, make him shoot him from the free throw line. But Brent, you got to know better than to reach there. Flatten Moore was two for two from the line in the first half. Looked pretty good, and he looked good again on that one. Still all right here with a one possession uh, situation. He's got 13 points. Witter and Tice check out. Renzelman and... Krause come in, or was that, uh, I think it was uh, Jankport. He's good, Chris. He's got 14 points. And Brent's Just, to the bench. Yeah. Uh, well, you got to give him a little bit of a rest, yeah. too. He's uh, been working hard. And with the fouls. And Pottis. Going to have to find some offense somewhere else. Pottis, Jankport, Schmidtke. Yeah. That time he forced it, he got caught, Marty. You know, he did that before he made the basket. Right, yeah, good point. Positive thing is you get to put your press back on. Negative thing is Galloway's back in, which is a big 
bonus for them. Yeah. He don't mind the pressure as much, even though he's a freshman. We mentioned Galloway's listed as 6'2", and he's thick. Root. Good double team. Nice strip by Jankhorn, and then a foul on Root. And that was a good call. He definitely got him. Road second. 16 foul. I like the officials not listening to the coaches. Just they officiate. Too often our coaches are talking to officials. Renzelman almost had the ball stripped. Got to get a basket here. Didn't get one the last time. Conwalk extending the defense, Chris. Jankport, can he get it? Yes! His first three of the night, he's got five in the game. And a steal oh, by Oh, Schmidtke almost with a steal. Jankport knocked it away. Witter coming right back in. He got about a little less than a minute's rest. Game time, anyway. Pressure, they can't handle the pressure. Get rid, I don't want the ball. Get, I don't want it. Here come. And right inside to flatten Moore off his foot, out of bounds, Norse ball. They have a chance to take the lead. Can't handle the pressure. Jankor trying to work the defense. Driving to the hoop, but not able oh. to score was Chase Renzelman. He got around the defense, just didn't have quite enough to uh, finish. Yeah, short-armed it a little bit, Marty. Yeah, there's a good call. It was a great move. Renzelman playing good D. Enright has it in the corner, looking. Conemaugh needs to find someone else besides Moore to get a basket. Enright's been really quiet. Fisher, we haven't heard his name at all. Second leading scorer. He's been basically nothing in the second half for him. Oh, good block by Renzelman. Schmidtke! Oh, couldn't get it again. North with a good opportunity, just couldn't put it in. And stolen away by Jankwart. Lead feed, Pottest. North leads 52-51. Oh, the turnovers. The defense, the press. I like it when we called in the opening that the press is gonna be great. <laughs> and you said too, back in the first half, you gotta make baskets to be able to set it up. Perrine. Oh, and timeout by Oconomowoc. Their fourth one. Full timeout, Marty. Scott, with 431 left. North finally in the lead. Hey, Chris, I hate the rain 19. on your parade. You said North had four turnovers. What is Oconomowoc at? 19. 19, and North only leads by one. That doesn't seem right. Well, North's done the job with the free throws, and uh, that's what, you know, it's their poor shooting tonight, but their defense is winning the game. They, they're having a poor shooting night, but defense and free throws is, is keeping them in, and now they have the lead. And O'Connell walks down to just one timeout with 4.30 left. Oof. 
team foul situation, Oconomowoc has six, North has four. Perrine trying to drive baseline. Couldn't get it to the hoop. He had to kick it back out, obviously. The defense of North is just stifling. Witter going for the steal. Couldn't get it. Perrine's shot is no good. And then it's off of Renzelman. Tice checking back in for Renzi. Renzelman's had a nice game tonight. Playing tough defense, scoring some points, a couple nice assists. And he's playing tough Dion Moore. Galloway has it on the wing. Tice working real hard underneath against Flat and Moore. Getting in front. That a boy. Work. That's that work, Austin. Good recovery. Enright couldn't get it to go. And then it's tipped out of bounds by Galloway. The right Honestly, I thought it went off a witter, but. Oh, I didn't. Okay. Well, you got better eyes than I do. Although I do wear glasses. You didn't like that one? <laughs> the lead in the ball, and you're in the bonus. Lots of check Ding. marks towards north right now. Oh, good feet inside, but uh, he's going to have to kick it out. Kraus. Rare three-point attempt. Pottis with a strong two-handed rebound. Puts it in, and he's fouled. Pottis with uh, 15 points, Witter with 15 points. And now they can get a two possession lead here. And he got it in. Enright gets it across half court, looking for a little bit of help. Oh, and a force. Uh, yeah, not a good shot by Enright, and then he picks up a foul. And Tice is gonna be at the line. See, now is when you could probably use your timeouts, but you don't have any, you only have one left. Oconomowoc trying to force the action, and right especially. Max Nineman checking in for uh, Oconomowoc. At the line is Austin Tice. You know, we've talked about all night, the free throws keeping North in the game. Now let's extend the lead with free throws. Oh yeah. You know who hasn't been in the game either is Mike Cundy either for... Not in this second half, no. no. Kind of surprised that that big fella hasn't been out there either. It's a tough matchup for Kraus guarding Galloway. Look at the help by Witter, the help by Janquart on Moore. Tice working real hard underneath. A little quicker than, than uh, the big guy, Flatten Moore. Perrine, yeah, good feed inside, and Flattenmore scores, and he's fouled, and that's going to be four fouls on Brent Witter. Big decision now for Coach Worth. I would take Witter out of the game with the lead. I would take Witter out of the game with the lead. 2.46 left. Schmidtke at the bench, I mean at the table. But they're not. They're going to keep Brent in. Flatten Moore leads all scores now at 17 points. He's been a load in there. Jankwart breaking the press easily. Kick over to Schmidtke. Couldn't get it. Tice fighting. Couldn't get it. And Perrine grabs the rebound. It's at height of Oconomowoc. Paid dividends there. Steal! Another steal. And a takedown. Pottist had an opening for a three. He didn't take it. And here, Worth, Eric Worth calls a timeout. North on top by one. There's 2.16 left. It's a full timeout. With North up by one, we'll be right back. I'm not your charity case. 
I am not your excuse to buy a new dress for the annual fundraiser. I am not the poster child for your big donation. I am out of debt and in my own home. I am off opioids. I'm graduating on time and on my way to a great job. I am. I am. We are. We are. We are. What it means to live united. They're back at North High School. It's been an awesome high school basketball game here tonight. Uh, referees doing a good job letting them play. Uh, North not shooting very well, but they do have the lead. Yeah, I have North shooting about, well, I had them a minute ago before those last two minutes at 35% in the game. They were up to 45% in the second half, but a couple misses of late, but they had two opportunities here. They missed it, but, and O'Connell got a chance to come down and take the lead and get another turnover, and another steal. Yeah. Just unbelievable live hand by the, the Raiders today. It'll be interesting to watch O'Connell walk and how they guard uh, Brent Witter on this possession. This is huge. North had it up to four, and then we had a three-point play by the big guy, Flanton Moore. Oh, now they're gonna come out in some type of trap, which is, I think this helps North. North can run some clock. If North can get the ball in the middle a little bit, the corner shot is gonna be wide open. Schmidtke in and out of the middle looking to get the ball inside. Now it's uh, Pottist. They're keeping Witter outside. Well, what happened was Oconomowoc decided to go to a trapping defense. The North is running clock. Schmidtke couldn't get it again. And Oconomowoc comes away. He's had some wide open shots. He's a three point shooter. You got to take him. Oh, yeah. Just, he's so close. He's going to get one yet, Marty. He's going to get one. They're calling Sawyer Pottis with a foul. <laughs> I like, if you get a stop here, Marty, I think it's so big because I think O'Connor gonna want a foul and this is right in your wheelhouse to get to the free throw line to be the ninth foul. You're a good free throw shooting team. Then it's double bonus time. I think this is a huge defensive possession for North. They gotta get a stop. That was a six-team foul. Oconomowoc will be at the line with the north, next north foul. Tice working real hard on Flatton Moore. North is just up on them on defense. Nobody's open. I think Galloway may have got away with the walk on the outside, but now they're going to call the foul down in the lane and I think they're gonna call it a one and one. Top free throws for a freshman. Checking out is uh, Connor Enright. Max Nineman comes in. Chris, that's gotta be for defense, obviously. Good, good call, Mario. Sitting the same thing. I'm gonna bring Enright back in if they foul him. Galloway ties it up. He's talking a lot, but you gotta still make another one, son. Schmidtke, don't be afraid to shoot that wide open three again. No kidding. See, a miss. Son. Now it's not so funny, is One it? minute left in the ball game. North with a lot of timeouts. They could run some clock and then uh, call a timeout if they need to. Road guarding uh, Witter. Too far away for the five second count. <laughs> 30 seconds left, the clock on the screen is wrong. Oh, Schmidtke almost looked like he dragged the foot. 20 seconds left. 15. Timeout North. I wish they'd have ran it down now, Chris. I don't like it. Now you gotta get it back in and set up your offense. 
We're all tied up, as you can see. 13.2 seconds left, Scott. Did we have any doubt it'd come down to this? <laughs> At the beginning, I did. <laughs> no way. I'm glad you were right again. I was, it was a war. It's been a war. Gotta like your chances at home. I can see Witter going to the basket here, trying to draw a foul. That's what I think is gonna happen, and he's a good free throw shooter. Uh, and I would think that if Witter gets it and drives to the hoop, it's like collapse city on him. He will have to kick it out, yep. and then we gotta have somebody make a shot. Yeah, and uh, Schmitke's due. Yeah, I agree with you there. You know, when you look at the guys on the bench, Pottis is a definite candidate. So, uh, Schmitke is. Uh, Tanner. Jankwart. Jankwart is. I don't think Tice is quite as much. But uh, first order of business, get the ball in. Well, they're going to run a double screen for Brent so he can get it at the top of the key, up at the top here, Marty. That's where it's going. Perrine guarding the ball. If I was Perrine, I'd be guarding not there. I'd be up and over to this side because this is just, whoa, it's a little more difficult than we thought. There's the trap. <laughs> oh, boy. Ten seconds. Schmitke, come on, Mac. No. And we're going to go into overtime. Not a good offensive set, Chris. Well, it came back to your thought, Marty. Get it in. Get it in bounds. And they were difficult. They, they did exactly what they should have done, is taken away the pass. You knew that Witter was going to come here, and they did a good job of that. The Coonies did defending that. And uh, yeah, I think it was a great call by you. I mean, not, I, I liked it when they were at home when you could just make a play. Ooh. Not, not long enough, uh, I need another color pen. Exciting ball game, Marty. Very exciting. All tied at 55 here in regulation. And they head into overtime. Four minutes is a long time. The plan for tomorrow night is to uh, cover Sheboygan Lutheran. They should be at home provided they win tonight. And we don't have any they idea what they're... By 40. What the score <laughs> of their game is, but uh, that's the plan, and that would again would be another seven o'clock start. But uh, let's finish business here. Perrine jumping center against uh, Austin Tice, the two fives. How about Tice getting up there to compete? May not seem like a lot, but if you strike first, it's a big momentum booster. Just like Witter that. Winner open, bango, baby! Combination of winning the jump, momentum hitting the shot, that's such a swing to start overtime. We could ask who is guarding him, pretty obvious, no one. Correct. Witter has Perrine. Schmidtke gets a little bit of help from Jankport. Nice play. Good, there's a double dribble not called. Galloway shot is no good. Witter with the board. North can build on a three point lead. There's an interesting matchup, Chris. 6'6 six, six Perrine against uh, Tanner Jankport. Barely six feet, if that. Witter coming hard off a screen. They got him a little too late, though. Roth doing a good job of recovering.
They're putting guys on the baseline and bringing them up hard. They're not letting Witter get a clean cutoff of a, I'll tell you, Tice could have been called for an offensive foul and there it is. He could have got called on the screen, wasn't, but when he went down to pull a stuff, that uh, was a little too much for the official. <laughs> Every time, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Enright has it being guarded by Jankport. Both teams now with eight fouls. Too. There's a Almost an offensive foul on Enright pushing off, but no call. I'll Good no call. Tell you, North is just in their grill and really frustrates the Coonies. They, they have no offense going. Everything they go, the North is right there on every Flat cut. Moore gets it inside, but Tice with a steal. There's where the quickness paid off. 150 left. Two and a half minutes has gone of this overtime already. Yeah. And each team, only two possessions. This is the third for North, however. Oh, almost a foul, no call. I'll tell you, you don't want to foul that guy. Perrine guarding Schmidtke real tough, and now he gets called for the slap. Still bonus time. Perrine played a long time, Chris, with three fouls. And uh, finally picks up his fourth. Schmidtke now needing to make some free throws. Look at all the hands on the knees for Oconomowoc. They're just beat tired. Oh, the left-handed Schmidtke buries the free throw. Not a big night scoring for Max. He's uh, had some tough luck at the three-point line. Couldn't get many to go, but uh, he's played a nice game overall. And he gets the second one in there. North, their largest lead of the game, five points. 115 left. All started by winning that tip, Marty. That's yeah, so good big. point. Flat Moore working hard. Tice working a little harder underneath. And it goes out of bounds. Enright trying to find Flat Moore underneath. Thought he was going to come out another step, and he didn't. Another turnover. It's got to be well over 20 now. 24. <laughs> Full timeout, Scott. Chris and I need a break. You're a busy man when you turn 18. But with all you've got going on, don't forget to register with Selective Service. It's the law. It only takes about two minutes to register at sss.gov. And you can do it without even looking up from your phone, just like that. When you turn 18, register at sss.gov. Back at North High School where the Raiders have the ball and a five point lead with uh, one minute and four seconds remaining. Chris, we're back to the old bugaboo for North though. They gotta get the ball in. Yeah. I think that uh, they're in really good shape. They have double bonus now. Their defense has been just so stiff and tough. Witter has four fouls, that's a concern. Tice has three, and uh, Pottist has three. For uh, the Coonies, Perrine has four. Flanton Moore has uh, three. You can't press this team. I mean, you, it's difficult. Schmidtke gets fouled. Yep, got to call that. Hit him right on the head. Trying to Max press a Miniman. pressing team. Schmidt will be at the line again, Chris. One shooting, thing that, might add. Yeah, and good free throw shooting team. 
Conemaugh with the goose egg so far here in uh, overtime. No points. I would have rather kept Witter outside that uh, free throw area, Chris, simply because of the four fouls. You don't want to get a cheapy in there fighting for the ball. Ugh. Connor Enright coming back in for the offense. For some reason, the basket is being difficult for Max tonight. That looked like a good free throw, and it just in, out, in, out. This one is going to be right in. That was long. Oh. And it goes. <laughs> Home court bounce. One minute. Galloway not in a hurry to get it across half court. Tice, good defense, not allowing Galloway to get to the basket. And then Pottis comes out to help Perrine. Had it stripped away by Brent Witter. Schmidtke wanted it because he wants to go back to the line and shoot some free throws. In the overtime, Oconomowoc, four trips down the floor, one missed basket, three turnovers. Let's get him to Oh, Shoot. come on, Max. You're better than that. North was so good in the first half, hitting 10 of 11 free throws. They haven't uh, shot nearly as well in the second half. Max gets the second one, however. And that's a three possession game. Yeah, good point. Good feed inside to Perrine, and he scores on an easy one. And a quick timeout by the Coonies. Not a good timeout there either. <laughs> Do they get uh, extra timeout in overtime? Nope, you get one in plus your, I think you get two, they're out. They should be out. It's a full timeout, but we'll keep it here. Uh, Chris, talk a little bit about what North has to do right now. Simple, just get, get the ball in bounds and they're gonna follow you. I mean, I think with the North's quickness, this is not an issue. You got a smart guy inbounding the ball in Witter. Uh, I don't think we should make this anything difficult, just run your regular press. I would rather Breaker. see Witter catch the ball. On an well, I mean, I know he's got a great arm, he's a shortstop and that well, kind of thing. Well, I just think you just gotta get start that way and he knows he can take a timeout. Right. Who do you want other than Witter? Who do you want to get fouled and go back to the line? Well, first I'd take Pot. He's been there now for how long? Put Max back there. And as I said, Jancourt's gonna inbound it. <laughs> <laughs> Little surprise. Hey, I may be the play-by-play -play guy, but I'm not so dumb. Galloway has his head right in Pottist. Tice has it! Is he going to take it and score? Yes, he is. Good decision by Austin. There's your dagger. Perrine. Oh, they're going to call it on Witter. And that's going to be his fifth. Brent finishes with 18 points. Jake Perrine shooting the bonus. He was one for one in the first half. That's his only free throw. There you see Brent. And he had seven <coughs> rebounds. I know there's only so much you can do, but he also had a couple of steals. You know what I remember about Perrine's free throw in the first half? I didn't see it, but you called it. Man, that's a flat shot, because <laughs> he did it exactly the same way right there. But it did go in for him. Six point lead for North with 21.8 seconds left. Just run your regular press breaker. 
Oh, and it's not a good inbounds. Perrine, shot goes in, he's got another basket. North with not much of a lead and then Pottis gets fouled with 7.6 seconds left and North only has three point lead. You're gonna join me down there, right? Yes. They were out of timeouts, that's why they shouldn't have taken a timeout before. All he has to do is make one, Marty. Root. Pottis gonna be at the line. He's been pretty good there tonight. I got him as a six for six. Chris is gonna go down and get some interviews for us. Pottis buries the free throw. Enright coming in. Checking out is Ray Lestra. I'm not sure who, uh, North called the timeout, it's a full timeout with 7.6 seconds left. Chase Renzelman comes back in for North. It's gonna be Pottist, Renzelman, Jankwart, and Kraus. Pretty good defensive squad gonna come out there. Before we get to that part of the game, though, Pottist has one more free throw. Coach Worth talking to the troops on your screen, however, you see uh, Jay Benish hoping for a miracle ending. His team led most of the game. North finally got the lead late in the ball game. They actually had the lead 54 to 51, 55 to 51, and then uh, Oconomowoc was able to tie it up and force it to overtime. Norris has scored 10 points in the overtime. Conemowoc only six. Pottest again puts it in. Jankwart, Enright, three ball, no good off the rim. Roots, rebound, put back is good, but that's the ball game. North a winner. 66 to 63. Don't go too far from your TV sets, fans. Chris and I will be back with a couple interviews and then we'll wrap this ball game up. With Mother's Finances, I wish we had discussed this sooner. It's difficult making decisions for mom. With dad gone, a lot has changed. Seeing my parents age, I worry about their financial decisions. As we age, our ability to make good financial choices decreases. Start the conversation today and plan for the future. Financial resources and tools are available at smartaboutmoney.org, a non-commercial organization focused on your financial success. The police called after midnight when they caught our son at a drinking party. It was a real wake-up call. A policeman suggested we try al on family groups. I didn't want to go to a meeting, but I'm glad I did. Are you troubled by someone else's drinking? You might be surprised at what you could learn in an al family group from people just like you. Call 1-888-4-AL-ANON or go to al .org. Four out of five women with ovarian cancer will experience recurrence. It's often incurable. Until recently, following chemotherapy, women with recurrent ovarian cancer had to simply watch and wait for their disease to come back. Well, we say, not on my watch. Not on my watch. With maintenance therapies, women can delay recurrence. Awareness of your choices empowers you. Take an informed and active role. Visit notonmywatch.com. Nothing hurts my mom, but she showed anyway. We were trained to help others but there's strength in finding help for yourself too. We're in this together. Even the toughest of us might not know where to go to get a little support, 
The VA Women Veterans Call Center connects veterans with personalized information on VA services that can make a difference. Call 1-855-VA-WOMEN or visit www.womenshealth.va.com. We've all seen that moment in movie credits that says no animals were harmed in the making of this film. As a film director, I rely on the eight decades of experience American Humane brings to safeguarding animals on set. They consult on scripts, advise on locations, training, veterinary care, and so much more. As a director, nothing is more important than making sure everyone is safe, and that includes the animals on set as well. And thanks to the passionate people of American Humane, we can. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. But now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome, we need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. We're back at North High School where the Raiders come away with the 66-63 overtime thriller. What a ball game, uh, Sawyer. <laughs> You guys really had a battle all night. That Ottawa team was tough. Yeah, they were. They, uh, you know, they were coming in as the 11 seed. We were coming in as the five seed. We were feeling pretty good. They came out and they smacked us in the mouth a little bit. But I thought after halftime we had a good team talk. Came out with a lot of energy and we really pulled it back for the victory. You know, I thought you guys could have made it a little easier on yourself if you could have hit some threes. Oh, that they yeah. came pretty hard in this cabal game. Yeah, we were we were stone cold. We were working on threes all week on practice. We were feeling good. Just came out. I think we had a lot of energy. We were just kind of rushing it a little bit, but I think we settled in and really, really took it to them. Now, one of the things that makes a difference is free throw shooting. In the first half, you guys hit 10 out of 11. Down the stretch, Max had a little bit of problem, but when you came to the line, it was uh, lights out. Mm -hmm. I was just feeling confident. I've been working on it all re season. You know, just coming up, knowing that I had to hit it for the team just to get a dub. All right. I got to go over to Chris, otherwise he's going to get mad at me, and I might use <laughs> up all the questions. <laughs> Brent, let's talk a little bit about the ball game tonight. First of all, you tell me your plan tonight for defensively against them. What was kind of the strategy? Because they are a big, strong team. Oh, absolutely. I mean, beginning of the game, number 12 is kind of punch us, punch, punching us in the mouth, like uh, Sawyer said. I mean, we kind of had to play him like we played Brad and I from De Pere. You know, big guys were a little undersized, so we kind of got to all pack it in the paint when he's yeah. posting up. So kind of zone up the backside. That was kind of our plan going in. And we know who their shooters were um, and kind of knew who we could uh, play off of and kind of help with the post. I thought tonight, I, I know I didn't see every single game, but I thought you guys defensively tonight was incredible. I mean, you made it so difficult. Everybody who was involved today was in their grill, and in their face, and you created 25 turnovers. The press, I knew the press I was hoping would work tonight. It did, but I thought tonight was an outstanding Raider defensive effort. Sure. It's something we work on every day at practice. Shell drill, jump into the ball, um, kind of that, like, technical stuff and, like, help defense, right? Um, so, yeah, communication is the biggest part. I mean, our, our communication tonight was... For the most part, um, incredible. At times, we um, didn't communicate as well, but when we did, it showed, and uh, we got a lot of big stops at the end. Now, on the other hand, they played D2, and they were all over you guys, too. And I like the fact you guys, when the three-pointer wasn't going, you guys took it to the basket. If you didn't get baskets, you were getting to the free-throw line, making free-throws that way, too. So a nice alternative plan, getting them into foul trouble, too. I mean, just the whole offensive thing, too, getting to the basket was good. Sure. So. Our offense is getting the ball to the wing. So we, they, had, they were kind of extending out. So we had to set up our cuts and kind of get the ball. So we had trouble with that right away. Um, but once we got it to the wing and started setting up our cuts, our offense started to come for us. Um, and that was kind of the key for us because they were big, they were stronger than us. Um, I mean, Sawyer taking the ball to the hole the whole game, really down the stretch, like carried us. Um, so pretty much just going to the hole, getting them in foul trouble and getting the free throw line. Hopefully tomorrow, as we mentioned before, those trees might fall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what Sawyer said, I think we were rushing in the beginning, you know. We got our regional game. Everyone's got this energy and this, this adrenaline going. Um, it took us a while to kind of settle in and hit some shots. But, um, again, the guys, that I think our, our sis had to be high today because oh. there's a lot of in, ins and outs, uh, in and out threes, and that's, the, that's where we kind of live on. Yeah. Marty? 
Hank, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit. The, those guys were talking a little bit about defense. The thing I noticed tonight was your defensive rotation off the press. It seemed like when you double teamed on one side, the guy on the other side that was hanging back was always looking to come up and make the steal. Uh, talk about that part of your uh, zone. Uh, well, we play kind of a, uh, you know, four, it's called a 4D blue. It's our, uh, we kind of like push up and make the point guards going, going fast. When we start coming down the sideline, that's when we trap from behind. Then the next guy that's on ball side could, should come up and get the steal. And coach has been really, really, you know, pushing us to do that because we, you know, we turned him over 13 times in the first half. I don't know about the second half, but it was a lot. And that's what kind of, you know, made us get these clutch turnovers in crunch time. Chris mentioned it in the opening. He said, you know, there's a couple of different ways you can, you can defend the post, and one of them is put a lot of pressure on the guards, and that's what you guys did today and uh, was successful. You guys play Brookfield East tomorrow. It'll be a tough game. TV, WSCS TV Sports will be doing Lutheran tomorrow night. They won tonight, Chris, so we'll be over at Lutheran tomorrow. That'll be a 7 o'clock start. Boys, thanks a lot for coming over. Again, North, a winner in overtime, 66 to 63. For the crew and my partner, Chris Wright, I'm Mike Martin saying thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you down the road.